Hey y'all, it's Betsy and Mom from Happily Ever After, etc. And we are back with a garden tour. So we have been doing so much work over at Mom's Garden. I will try to find some clips of what it looks like last fall, last yeah. spring before we started. But you might remember like there was monkey grass all in here. This was all weeds. Yeah. Like she has never done anything with these front garden beds in the 10 years she's lived here. She's done a lot in the back, but this is the first year she's done anything up front. And she decided to go from like zero to 360 and just do it all. So yeah. it's still a work in progress. You can see there is a lot of space in these beds for more plants, perennials, annuals, all kinds of stuff. But you might have caught my video where <laughs> we did a garden tour of my house after a month and a half of neglect and that's because mom and i went on a cruise a european cruise for almost a month and then actually got back my garden looks like crap and i just i just did a tour for you right out of the gate before i cleaned it up and then we cleaned it up on camera well in the midst of all that mom's been over here weeding and putting down pretty compost and making sure all her bricks are nice and her garden, it's not perfect. Like you can see, she still needs to go buy some more compost and things, but it looks great. And a lot of her plants were put in after the heat wave. Yes. And so they look the way they're supposed to, as opposed to most of my bubblegum, Supertunia Vista bubblegum is gone or dead because it got hit with two heat waves. They said in September when we were on our cruise in Europe, there was almost a week of 105 days here. And it just took out the little I had that made it through the first heat wave. So we're going to show you all of mom's plants and everything we did this year as a kind of end of the season garden tour for mom's first year in her front garden. And then maybe next season we'll do a garden tour of the backyard too, because I don't think we've ever really shown the backyard other than when I did the new garden bed around my big tree, we went in the back and divided and transplanted some hydrangeas, some agapanthus. She gave me a bunch of free plants from the backyard over to my new garden bed. I think that's the only time you've really seen it. So it's not perfect right now enough to do a garden tour. It's almost done for the season. So next year we will, we will do a garden tour back there, but we're going to stop talking. Start walking. Biddy, you're in charge. You want to show them around? Show them your favorite tree? She said, <laughs> I like all of it. Yeah. We were planting the pansies today. Biddy was dancing the whole time. She was like, this is my pansy dance. All right. Let me grab the camera and we will start on this side. And then we'll move over to the magnolia garden bed. Although I guess we have to come up with a new name for it. Yeah. Now that sure. there's not a magnolia tree. Yeah. All right. So this is the left side of the porch and the right side is not identical, but it is very similar. It's a little shorter. So this side of the house is longer and it's going to go around the corner. She does have a wraparound porch on this side. So you want to tell them everything you have over here? We had a big um, holly bush on each side of my- Huge holly bushes. Steps and took those out. Someone yeah. fell into them and that's injured that's himself. That's, that's really the only thing that was here to and begin with. Grass. And the monkey grass. And we Hold up. Let's let place. this truck go. He is struggling. He's on the struggle bus. All right. So what'd you put in? You put in a gardenia bush. On either side. Each side of the porch. So I have a little bit of symmetry going. And then I don't remember what this variegated um, bush is. I don't know. And you planted that without me, so I'm not it's, sure. Uh, I think it's a euonymus. Euonymus, but I'm not positive. But I like it because it's variegated. And it'll just give your eye a pla place to rest. And I'm not huge on non-flowering things, but mom really likes variegated things. I do. That, that, that white in there gives you a little bit of color. Yeah. Even when it's not blooming. So I have my 
Laura Pedlam bushes, which are the big purple ones that flower pink in the um, fall. They're flowering right now. And that's what I kind of have as my resting place. But mom's not as big on the purple pink color scheme. So she, she likes a lot more greens and yellows. Yeah. Um, put in, um, this is a blue hydrangea, but for some <laughs> reason, I have this pink petunia. It's like it, a purpley pink. It, it's grown up all on its own. It was planted by a bird. Nobody planted it, but here's the thing. The bird... There's one on this side and one on the other side, right? The, the other. The right bird now. planted one here. I promise you, we did not plant these. And unless mom's boyfriend went and bought them and planted them when we were on our trip, and I I highly doubt he took that initiative. Um, that's not in his uh not in his repertoire. And they were not here before, not last year, not the year before. Not when we ripped out all the monkey grass, so well, we, left him. we left them. We figured, why the hell not? So, and then she put in. I did put in some. Uh, his lantana. Lantana. They you got those for a really good deal at oh, Marvin's. Two dollars a pop. Yeah, and they love their life they here. Have like one, two, three, four, five. They will sometimes come back. We're in what an eight B, and so sometimes things like that will come back in our zone. Sometimes they won't. So, so it's just hard to say. we're hoping they look really healthy still. So, will you cut them back for the winter? Uh, maybe. Just depends on what back. they look. They'll die back, and then we'll just see if they come back or not. And then we got some uh, day lilies. Day lilies here, which is like mom's favorite flower. I have some on this side and on the other. It's very mirrored around the front. Around the wall. mom's not huge on symmetry. I love symmetry. Mom likes a little bit more different plants here and there, yeah. but she has a very like still working on the porch because our antique booth kind of takes over the porch. But her front porch is very traditional, southern, and she normally has big ferns hanging in all these spaces. They all died when we went to England. Um, and so the very formal front porch, she likes the symmetry on either side of. So then she's got some I've got ferns. Some that are trying to come back to life. Yes. Ferns, my ferns took a hit this year. They really did. Mine are great. Yeah, ferns are beautiful. I'm two, three miles away, and then mine are awful. But your yeah. super tune is great, and mine are awful. So, so you know. And this is one of those rose bushes from your house. Yeah, so we transplanted these over six, here. Six rose bushes. Six of them, different places. Well, hey, bitty, bitty. Look at bitty. And my, <laughs> whole planter is pretty much done for the season. Yeah, it just kind of pooped out. And that was all super tunias. Was all the super tunias from that first wave is what got hit in this the heat. first heat wave. So the ones in here, the ones in her planters here, the ones she planted after the heat wave they're doing great. are they're all pink and beautiful. And over, and over here really is like behind the tripod. I mean this is what they normally would look like in our zone. So, go figure. So, yeah, we transplanted these. I'll link to that video down below. But I had six red roses, knockout roses that I planted last year. And I couldn't find the pink ones. And then we found six pink ones. And they were a really good price. So, we planted the pink ones at my house and transplanted the, the red ones over here. So, not, we didn't need to, but just kind of wanted to. So now, she's been putting a few fall things in, especially this time of year. Um, and she still needs to plant bulbs. She's got a lot of iris bulbs and things. But they say it's best to get as many of your perennials in as possible. And then plant your bulbs around those. So they can kind of come up at different times. Yes, that way she'll still have spring color here when these mums are not, not alive. So you can see over here, her little Japanese maple is struggling. It is, but it's still alive. He's on the struggle bus, but he'll probably be better next year. Yep. And then you can see where her irrigation is. So this is what I'm going to do at my house next year is put in irrigation to all my garden beds instead of the soaker hoses. Because I swear... 
I have to patch another soaker hose, I might scream. And then you just compost over that. But you can see she's doing the no dig method. This is what we're doing in front of my shed. So you just put down the cardboard to smother the roots of the weeds and the grass. You want to pull the big things. Like you're not going to put cardboard over big lumpy weeds. But it keeps things from respreading. And then you put down your compost and it looks and then I'll probably Beautiful. end up putting down pine straw as mulch because I have a big well, pine tree here. Yes, her pine tree is volunteered as free mulch. So I'll probably end up putting that down over the compost. But the compost is to help enrich the soil. Yes, although mom has great soil. Right. Again, three, four miles down the road, I have awful soil. Mine's very sandy, and mom's is great. So. But the, um, the monkey grass was way over here. It was... Right over here. Like, I've really enlarged the beds. Yes, this is going to be so nice to underplant once this Japanese maple grows up. And then she just planted these sun hostas under her camilla tree, camellia, and it is full of buds. That's going to be gorgeous next month. And she's got a big hydrangea back here that the previous owners planted. And she just planted this. Is this a azalea that she got on sale? Marvin's at the end of the season. So then... We have a bunch of camellias and azaleas back here. Yeah. So probably going to, like, curve this around here, and then the actual, like, planting space will stop right under that first camellia back there. Yeah. But you never know. You yeah. never know. Pretty we pretty much know. Yeah. So over here, it was glorious a couple weeks ago, but all, the, but all the mulch has come down and covered the compost. And you can see her uh, her hose, the yellow hose. That's where my uh, bricks that, are going to be. That is indicative of where she wants to put more bricks for another brick path, but we have mm -hmm. to get some more bricks. The lady that gave me all these bricks for free. These are all from an old house. And so mom doesn't believe in paying for bricks. She just waits till she can get free ones. Yeah, she told me I can come get some more. So we're going to go get a hut, another a truck. bunch here, and of course, some in the backyard. I I did all my beds back there. Yep. So. All right, so then we did, we did hold up a second. So then we did this whole garden bed this season as well. We built the arbor, and we planted, what is that, Mama? Peggy Martin. Peggy Martin Rose. Climbing Rose. I wanted you to say it because you love it I so Peggy much. Martin, it, was tall. <laughs> it, it was grown. It was like. It was itty bitty. It was like this big. Yes. It was this much. So In one like, season. About well, not even a season, like a month. Like a month. And I'll tell you, like. Oh, there's your tape. We were looking for that. No wonder we couldn't find it. It's on the arbor. Um, I planted mine on my chain link fence and I could be wrong, but I think mine's grown more than yours, Maybe. but that could just be because I'm spreading mine out horizontally, whereas yours is all going vertically and it's kind of hard to compare. Biddy says, I love it out here. This is great fun. And I'll tell you what else has really done really well here at these bicycles. Yes. They will get really tall about, they're supposed to get like 12 feet tall. Mm-hmm. And they have this really pretty blue flower on them. And so we planted more daylilies on either side and, and ferns and some hookera that are loving it here. We weren't sure if it was shady enough. Here's a little bit of that blue color left on the Vitex. And I just got one of these on the clearance rack to plant at my house because I loved it in mom's garden so much. And then the gumfrina is I have two of the little roses just about there. done. And that there's one was dying, and it came back. It came back like we thought it was dead when we planted it. Yep. And you've got some cone flowers over here, although they oh, are. Uh, I was gonna say they, they're they're something deficient because they are coning down at the very base. Yeah, it's kind of weird. That's not normal. They're just not real tall. I don't know why I'm pretty sure this blue is a weed. That is, it's it's <laughs> money wart. Yep. And then this is what this is all azalea. These are all azaleas. And it like. She had to pull huge weeds out of here. And there's still some from the And neighbor. there's still some from the neighbor. The, the neighbor has been working on this hedge with mom 
a lot, but there's, I mean, this is years and years of weeds. So <sighs> they'll be pretty though. Like the azaleas will grow together back in the middle once you get all that weed killed. So then over here, like you can even see if you go back to that video where we were planting the foundation plants, we planted, <laughs> we planted your oak leaf hydrangea and whatever that green bushes in front of it wasn't there. It wasn't so there. Um, it's grown. you it's might grown. need to take that out. Yeah, it's some kind of very Just fast growing bush. bush. Um, and then all the green behind the oak leaf wasn't there. That was a hole straight through to the other and side. That's just a weed. And that's just weed. That's just a weed that grows. But you might have to be on top of that because I don't think your neighbor is going to be. No. Nope. And then dogwood right here oh, that's, a, uh, that's gardenia. another gardenia by up front and then she has a trio of that blue veronica like i have behind my crepe myrtle this one is blooming for the here's another red rose it looks great more gumfrina and bubble gum and then what was it we planted over here is that a hydrangea and some more of the comb flowers as i say is that comb flowers yeah so that's pretty much it for this side. I guess let's go across the way. But it is just like, a lot of it looks like a blank slate. You still got so much room for new plants. And perennials and annuals and all kinds of stuff. Mom really likes bushes. Because they just take up space and they, and they don't have to work as hard on them. I'd rather have as many flowers as possible, but I like, you like more of a traditional garden bed, whereas I want more of a like country, English country kind of well, look. Over the years, it takes a lot yes, but this is my first garden and I'm happy with that. Whereas you're, you want to plant things, not necessarily maintain them. <laughs> yeah. So. We can see we've got the same thing here. We've got gardenia, lantana, daylilies. She does have her hose hook up right here, which is unfortunate, but whatever. Lantana. We've got a little peggy. Fern. Now she does have some nandina over here. And then some really pretty mums on this side. I mean, the mums over there are pretty, but these ones are uh, an interesting color. And then this cabbage of all her cabbages is like the prettiest. I got all purple cabbages. She got this white one and it turned out pretty. And then more sun hostas, foxtail fern, another camellia. And then you might remember when we planted this entire um, path and it the entire path got moved when the big magnolia tree came out. Yeah, Everything we planted in between it died. Everything. Everything. Like all the flocks. Everything. Not even a little bit is left. Not even a remnant. It's just. So we're going to have to get some more or get something else. Not sure. But. You want to tell them about this bed? This bed. I used to have a big giant magnolia tree. It was probably 50 it was, feet tall. Over the power lines up there. Yeah, so I mean, similar they on the other side. All on one side, and so it just, it was bad. But, so they, they, came, they came and took it out. We did a whole video on them taking it out, and it opened up the space like crazy, which was not necessarily ideal, but it's not bad, just yeah. different. So, so we've, got, we've got that one um, crepe myrtle tree there, and I have another tree coming. She's going to plant over here a loquat tree. Yeah. And then she's still unweeding around where the magnolia was. Yep. And uh, they came and they ground the stump down. So she was thinking about leaving the stump in, but over the last month or two since they took that tree out, mm -hmm. it has pushed a lot of new growth. There was magnolia leaves coming out of it everywhere. And so she had to have it ground down which was unfortunate, but it is what it is. And then, so if we take out all these weeds back here, the crepe myrtle tree, since we planted that, has done so well. Mm -hmm. It was almost, like, it was really struggling on this side. And it's, and all, it's all come in. It's all filled in, even just since we planted it. 
Now the dogwood, it is a true understory tree. And it just, that second heat wave took it out. So might have to replace that next year if it doesn't come back. It was not, yeah. But you can see we had a, let me walk back here. We put one of these tree rings around this crepe myrtle to really help. It fills up with water and then it slowly trickles out. It has polymers in it. Yes. And so you need to get one of those yeah, for this dogwood and the loquat when we actually plant those yeah. because they, like this tree was struggling and she does have drip over here, but that just constant water to the base for a tree especially when we were on vacation, it was great. And we bought the kind, like she said, with polymers in it. And so it collects moisture when it rains, when the drip runs over it. And so ever since we, we filled them up, we put them around the tree. And ever since then, they have always been at least half full. So they are, those trees are getting constant water. And I say those trees because I have one around my tree. And then she has one around her um, hydrangeas as well. So that's about it. You can see we've got the gumprina and the Vista bubble gum. And then these are mums from last year. And here's some more of that Vitex. So she has one on this side, one on the other side. And there's the color on it. They're very pretty blooms. And it's bloomed what almost these couple blooms will be the on. third time yeah. this season. So... So it's a really pretty bush, and like Mom said, it gets really big. So it'll be quite the interest once it's full grown. But that is it. That is the full yard. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it will be really fun to see what it looks like next season. And as you put more plants and things in, mm -hmm. it's just going to keep getting better. But even in one season, it has it's gone crazy. It's transformed quite a bit. So. Hope you like this video. Bye. Bye-bye. Biddy, say bye. Biddy said, nope. <laughs>